Space, the final frontier. Since the dawn of mankind, humans have always looked to the moon, hoping to one day reach it. Over the centuries, as humanity advanced, it grew ever closer to the goal of reaching the moon. However, it wasn't until 1957 that humanity began its journey through space to reach the moon with Sputnik. Sputnik was the first satellite launched by mankind that orbited the Earth. Launched on October 4th, 1957 by the Soviet Union, it mainly served the purpose of letting the world know that the Soviet Union had achieved space travel through its periodical beeps. These beeps were heard around the world. These beeps resounded especially in the ears of Americans. After Sputnik, the Soviets quickly followed up the first Sputnik launch with Sputnik 2. This spacecraft was bigger and better in every way. And it, it included something groundbreaking, like other dog. Sputnik 2 was launched on November 3rd of 1957, and it successfully sent the first mammal into space, Laika. That wasn't all. It contained radio transmitters, a telemetry system, a temperature control system, and more. Sputnik successfully launched, and it was able to transmit its data back to Earth, including biological data on Laika. This launch also sparked a fierce debate on the treatment of animals for science. The Soviets sent Laika into space with full knowledge that she would never be recovered. The United States watched the Sputnik launches in horror. The Soviet Union and the United States were currently occupied in a Cold War, a war where neither side was actively fighting the other, but instead acted via proxy states, proxy wars, and by building their arsenals. The state's greatest fear was that the Soviets would use the same technology they used in the Sputnik launches to launch a nuclear weapon at the United States. The successful launch of Sputnik was a significant blow to the United States, which was seen as the leader in world innovation. Now the Soviets were seen as being just as, if not more, advanced to the United States, which the U.S. did not like. The President of the United States at the time, Dwight D. Eisenhower, a commander during World War II who had a great firm sense of American priority, downplayed the importance of the Sputnik program publicly to help the American people maintain confidence in the government. However, he silently poured massive amounts of government resources into the space program to catch up with the Soviet Union. Thanks to that, in just a few mere months, America assembled a rocket, its first satellite, Vanguard. On December 6, 1957, it was ready for launch. They began the launch sequence and the Vanguard test vehicle lifted off the launch pad, but unexpectedly experienced a fatal loss in thrust. The rocket crashed back into the ground and exploded, destroying the rocket. After this catastrophic failure, the press started comparing the failed Vanguard test to the Sputnik, calling it Kaputnik and Flopnik. This was not good for the U.S., as it had wanted to keep up with the Soviet Union, but instead failed and showed the world the gap in space technology between them and the Soviets. America would not be defeated for long. On March 17, 1958, the United States launched Vanguard 1. This satellite was different in one major way, solar power. This new source of power meant that the satellite could generate electricity for a long amount of time and stay active for potentially decades. The satellite was not the only new thing about this launch though. This was also the first time a three-stage rocket was used. The, th the three-stage system proved to be able to increase the height achieved by using different stages for different parts of the launch. This technology put America back on the space innovation map and was a starting point for the race between the United States and the Soviet Union. Three years after the launch of Vanguard 1 in 1962, the Soviet Union claimed another achievement in the space race. The first human to enter space and orbit the Earth was Yuri Gargarin. From his launch via the Vostok 1 spacecraft, Yuri was able to orbit the Earth entirely and safely land in Saratov, a city in present-day Russia. Through this mission into space, Yuri displayed the prowess and development that the Soviet Union had achieved just five years after the launch of the first Sputnik probe. The Soviet Union was able to boost the morale of its citizens and strengthen its reputation. Just 23 days after the Vostok 1 mission, the United States launched the Freedom 7 capsule that brought the first American into space. Gargarin's Vostok spacecraft weighed 10,428 pounds, while Freedom 7 weighed just 2,100 pounds. Gargarin had been weightless for 89 minutes, while Shepard was weightless for just 5 minutes. Outsiders couldn't help but point out the differences in the missions. In the public's view, the United States was undoubtedly behind the Soviet Union. 
These differences in achievement and technology eventually led to JFK increasing funding for NASA and declaring that by the end of the decade, the U.S. would put a, would put a man on the moon. After this declaration on May 25, 1961, the United States had to find a way to bring the declaration to fruition. In response to this, NASA ended up creating the Apollo program. The program was led by some of the brightest minds in the country and was supported by thousands of engineers, technicians, and support staff. They worked tirelessly to design, build, and test the spacecraft, moon landing module, and other systems needed for the mission. Finally, on July 20th, 1969, the world held its breath as astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins became the first humans to set foot on the moon. It was a monumentous occasion, not only for the United States, but for all of humanity. The moon landing marked a major milestone in the space race against the Soviet Union and proved that the United States had the technology, expertise, and determination to achieve its goals. For those who worked on the Apollo program, the moon landing was a result of years of hard work and dedication. They saw their efforts pay off as Armstrong and Aldrin took the first historic steps on the moon's surface. The moon landing inspired a new generation of scientists, engineers, and dreamers who saw what was possible when people worked together to achieve a common goal. The moon landings were the peak of space exploration in many ways. The Cold War and space race led to rapid developments in space technology, coupled with massive funding. In the coming years, the Soviet Union continued its space development with missions like Verna 7 and Mars 3 in 1970 and 1971. However, after the moon landings, the space race was seen as over by many. Most people agreed that the U.S. had won the space race. After the moon landing, NASA slowly began to lose its funding and slowed down on its progress. However, the Soviet Union kept going strong. Perhaps too strong. Coming to the 1970s, the Soviet Union was a massive global power, but it was having problems with constant political dissent in the West and a slowing economy. It had a tragic string of deaths with its leaders, but this ended when Mikhail Gorbachev became in charge in 1985. Gorbachev, however, would bring a newfound change to the Soviet Union. He wished to bring newfound freedom to the people and decrease cruelty. However, this strategy would end up backfiring on him just six years later in 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed. The Soviet Union's former territory became a myriad of new states, each with a fraction of the Soviet Union's power. The Soviet Union was not the only one to be hit hard, however, NASA also slowly declined. Its funding was slowly cut for other projects now that the race was believed to be over by most people. Over time, common folk and politicians alike lost interest and stopped paying much attention to NASA and the space development. The last time that humans were on the moon was more than 50 years ago on December 19, 1972. Nowadays, private companies like Elon Musk's SpaceX or Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin are the main organizations delving into space. Space advancements have sped up due to these companies, but the age of governments controlling space seems to have come to a close.